Hello, hello, hello again. I'm Janara. I'm with you with another video. Guys, I made a mistake while recording October Pilot Talk 2022. So I'm recording this part from Izmir, Turkey. The other parts will be from Dubai. Sorry for that, but I made a mistake. That being said, let's continue with Pilot Talk October 2022. Orlando as I told you before I always beat Orlando flights Orlando flights are really beautiful for me and it suits me well but the thing is I didn't think of there will be a hurricane and hurricane Ian was the most strongest stage the moment then when I was gonna go there actually a couple of days before the flight they closed the Orlando airport and I was like mm, let's see if I'm gonna make it or not thankfully the day that I was gonna fly they reopened the airport and literally we were the one of the few international carrier who landed there and we started using the new terminal that it was really nice and amazing terminal because most of the time in the US terminals are quite old since aviation is really developed and really old in the US the airports are constructed way before then rest of the world therefore it's extremely old but like this time we were in really nice quite young beautiful terminal I love it. All right, let's now go back to Dubai and you can see the details of the Orlando flight from my Dubai shot. And I will be back for the simulator part. All right, guys, see you. See you, see you in Dubai. The first sector was 1523 and the return sector was 1314. So these two flights almost two hours difference in between. Normally, as we discussed, return sectors are shorter because we have tailwind on the return sectors towards the Dubai. So, but this was very special case, almost like two hours, two hours shorter. We had a huge, nice, amazing tailwind so that the flight time too was two hours shorter. The lever guys was pretty straightforward. I had to do my stuff as I previously talked to you, there's a really nice outlet mall next to the hotel. I bought some stuff for my friends four or five months ago in my previous Orlando layover and they didn't fit them. So basically I, in this layover, took everything with me and I returned them. Can you believe it? After four months, they accepted it. That's why I love shopping in the US and I love customer service, customer care in the US. So even if four months later, if you don't use the items, you can just either refund or you can change it. That's amazing. That's why I always do my shopping in Orlando. And as usual, I did my grocery shopping there too. And I was there for the return flight. The return flight we already mentioned two hours earlier. So I arrived to Dubai. That was really nice level. As I told you again, saying previously many times, Miami and Orlando are one of my favorite flights because I love them both. I love Florida. Hello guys, it's me again, Janar in winter, stupid YouTuber who forgot to record the proper video. All right, guys, now we continue with the rest of the video. After the flight, I had two days off and after two days off, I had simulators. Simulators in Emirates are a little bit challenging and you have to prepare for that. Now I will give lots of details about the simulators. All right, I will try to be fast. I hope I can cover everything. Guys, in Emirates, we are having evidence-based training. It's a two-day process. So in this two-day process, you are in a check continuously, even though the first day is called, first 30 minutes called check. Actually, you are being checked in whole session. What I'm trying to say, I'll give details, you will understand. All right, guys, the simulators actually start with two hours presentation. This is a really intense and it really takes two hours. And an instructor comes to this room before you, prepares for the session. When you come to the classroom, you see that the whiteboard is almost full. The instructor came to there before you and they, he wrote lots of things about the simulator sessions. So basically it's a very intense two hour presentation. He keep asking the question, he explains the sessions and then you go for the simulator. Simulator starts with the check. Yes, you didn't hear wrong. First thing you are doing is a check. So the theory behind this it sh is they say that, okay, you, as a line pilot, you should be ready for the check because non-normals can happen 
anytime, anywhere during the operation. So you should be prepared for that. Therefore, uh, you have checked right away. Whereas it was not the same in Turkey. So we used to have training day first, check the second. I like the second option better because at the end of the day, I strongly believe that the simulators should be as a tool where you can improve your skills. Yeah, it shouldn't be check oriented. And EBT's philosophy is exactly the same. Evidence-based training is not check. But that's how it is we start uh, with check. So basically with the check, you don't know what's gonna happen. Even if you have examiner guide, like most of the airlines, you cannot, you know, guess 100% what malfunction you will have because the examiner choose the malfunctions within the list. So there are always five, six different malfunctions or non-normals that you can deal with. Therefore, you know, you have to prepare. After 30 minutes, once check is over, then it's time for the training part. So simulators are three hours long, one hour 30 minutes for the captain, one hour 30 minutes for the first officer. How it proceed in general, captain start with the check and then captain continues with the training and during this training you as you can see as as like normal with the most of the airlines we have one hour uh, training session where we practice a photo engine failure after takeoff single engine landing uh, single engine go around. those are compulsory things for the regulatory purposes and after that we keep practicing some other things and this you know curriculum changed once this curriculum is different for each simulator sessions because the main logic behind once every three years you have to cover some certain you know airframe airplane systems like hydraulic failure electric failure and then you can have flight control problems this kind of things you have to repeat once every three years malfunctions can change time to time but it should cover the whole system or one of the systems all right guys after the training session you continue with the day two and of course after the training you have one hour debriefing and during this debriefing time you talk what did go well what could we do better to improve ourselves you always discuss this topic and the instructor gives the information about the next day and then when you come to next day it's pure training you have two scenario based training in the scenario based trainings you have to deal with a very challenging situation like such as for instance, in, you are on the North Pole, you have a malfunction, the closest uh, airport that you can reach is two hours away from your point, and then how you prepare, where you don't have satellite coverage, where you don't have SATCOM coverage, where you don't have any internet connection, this kind of things, so that you can practice very challenging environments. In this kind of scenario-based trainings, depending on the experience level, examiners are, they are giving the, some inputs for you to improve yourself. So I really like these sessions because it's very beneficial for captains and first officers. You practice the stuff where it's almost impossible or very rare, rare really, really, really rare to see these kind of things in real line operations. At the end of the second day, you get a final result. The final result could be three things. First, objective achieved. The second, objective achieved with additional training. And third, objective not achieved. Yeah, guys, the objective achieved should be your aim. So this is the best result. And then, of course, for each, you know, skill set that you have used for the simulators such as leadership teamwork decision making communication workload management application of procedures you have been not graded but you have been given a command so the management reads all these commands so at the end of day two you will get a one result either option can be possible so what i'm trying to say once you pass the check on day first, well, if you get objective achieve, it doesn't mean that you will have objective achieve at the end of the session because it's a two day process. And during this two day, you have been checked continuously for the each individual steps. Therefore, if you cannot complete this some certain maneuver within a um, satisfactory level, you can get objective not achieved at the end of today where you need to repeat this session or whole simulator entirely. Okay guys, that being said, that concludes for the simulators. 
Of course, I passed my simulator, I got objective achieved and I was ready for the next duty. And now I am done in the winter part. We are going back to Dubai to summer part and you can see me with t-shirts and continuing with the October 2022. After simulator, I had one rest day, then I was ready the shortest flight from Dubai to Muscat. Guys, surprisingly enough, I never flew to Muscat from Dubai. I've been there with Turkish Airlines before, but Emirates, three and a half years, I've never been there. So I was excited because it's very short flight. And right now, I believe the shortest from Dubai because now yet we are not flying to Qatar. So guys, it's really nice flights. I really miss these flights because when I used to fly with 73, I used to make lots of 35, 40 minutes flight time flight and almost one hour block time. So it was time for me to practice this kind of flights. The boat sector, the first and the set return sector was one hour six minutes is by chance both of them was exactly 106 so guys 106 don't get me wrong it's not flight time it's block time so basically you push back then you taxi out then you take off climb cruise descend landing and taxi in to the gate total time is one hour six minutes so maybe you are spending 35 40 minutes in the air only so these kind of flights are a little bit special you should triple seven guys when they are so used to fly with triple seven of course it's difficult for them to have short flights normally we fly a long distances and you have all time available to you but seven three guys on the other hand they are flying these flights like this, so for them it's like a normal operation. For that reason, when you fly such a short route in Emirates, so people are tend to be more stressed and they brief everything on the ground, review everything. This is a good practice because eventually we forget, right? I haven't flown in 73 for more than three years, and then of course I'm not the same guy as I used to be. So you should be prepared very well for these short flights in order not to miss anything. So that, that's literally once you take off, you land like this and then you check your watch and then, oh, that's it. So that's it guys, I flew there, Muscat. Muscat is an alternate for us because you know, most of the airports in UAE are so close to each other. So theoretically, you can take them as an alternate, but in case of bad weather conditions, if something happens, exactly the same weather over this alternate as well. So there is no way for you to go there if weather is bad in Dubai. You cannot go Maktoum, you cannot go to Sharjah. These airports are literally in the vicinity of the, each other. Therefore, most of the time we take Muscat as an alternate. So if something happens, you have at least 30 minutes to go and land in Muscat and you have enough fuel for that. All right but I always had this mascot for my alternate, but I wa I've never been there with Emirates. That was really good for me. I experienced this shortest flight in Emirates network right now. I returned back to Dubai and I was ready for the next flight. I said next flight, but actually next duty, I should have said because it is SAP recurrent. What I'm meaning by saying SAP, safety and emergency procedures recurring training. So guys, in this kind of training, we have to review the some safety and emergency equipments and then you have some practice for instance uh, we practice firefighting you practice to open the door passenger doors you practice to closing the passenger doors using emergency equipment and also half day you have a chance to have a combined CRM sessions with cabin crew. So you work together, you have some collaboration with each other, you're trying to solve the problems, puzzles, we play some games together. So the main point is you're trying to understand their point and they're trying to understand your point. So guys, yeah, that's it. The current training was from 12 to 8. Since training departments work really hard right now, and there is literally, you are going to trainings in shifts. So it's not like 9 to 5. So basically there are shifts to go there. So thanks God, it used to be 
annually, now it's biannually, so once every two years, you have to make this recurrent training. And I have done it, I completed it, and that was my last SAP in Emirates. And also I forgot to mention, that was also my last simulator sessions in Emirates. I will tell the details in the next Pilot Talk video series, guys. All right, guys, after this, I had another short turnaround to Daman. Daman is Saudi Arabia, so basically very close to Dubai. And then the first sector was one hour 22 minutes and the second sector was one hour seven minutes so very easy flight very nice flight i like it but i have flown these flights many times we already talked about it that's why i skip it after this i had seattle flight but before seattle flight i had a ular standby normally when you have a ular they sometimes they put you one day standby just before your ular trip because you are acclimatized for these ULR flights and they want you to give you one standby day so that in case of any you know sickness or something you can go any ULR destinations for the other pilot and ULR and standbys in general six hours long and 90 95 percent of the time you don't you are not given a flight but sometimes of course if something extraordinary happens you can you can have a, a ex different flights than your original roster my original rostered flight was seattle so i had nothing in my ular so i flew to seattle seattle is a polar route because the shortest route from Dubai to Seattle is via the polar route because you start flying north, 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 north and once you reach the polar region you keep flying straight line but eventually your heading turns from north to south gradually and then you start flying south and you end up in Seattle and during that time frame, Northern Hemisphere, we were about to enter winter time, right? October. During winter time, Northern Hemisphere, especially North Pole, is always dark, right? So during summertime, it's vice versa, all the time, daytime. This flight originally started at daytime. So we were lucky to see the polar region daytime. But if I made this flight a night departure and nighttime, it's always dark flying from Dubai to Seattle because it's on the northern hemisphere and you once you get closer to northern pole as we know nights are long there all right guys that's enough for polar information because I already talked a lot about the polar flies in the previous pilot talks you can check I'm just trying to talk the things that I haven't mentioned before I'm now gonna give the flight details for you another nice coincidence both sector I mean the first sector and the second sector was 14 hours 9 minutes exactly but you can think how come you always told us from US to Dubai is shorter because you have tailwind yes but don't forget we are not flying most of the time in these routes east to west or west to east we are flying north to south and south to north and you have most of the time cross wind and the wind the weather phenomenon in the northern hemisphere when you go up north it means that the weather events are not that strong and then you have fairly light winds it's not affecting your flight times of course it's a nice coincidence to have 14 hours 9 minutes but imagine in the previous flight in Orlando I, I told you two hours shorter so you can imagine how wind affects if you have tailwind or if you don't have wind at all even when you're flying northerly most of the prevalent wind is crosswind so it's not affecting your flight time either in the first sector or the second sector because it's not headwind or tailwind all right guys that's why the both sectors were so close to each other when you fly to Seattle of course sometimes the weather can change you can have tailwind or headwind but again I'm telling it's really it's really rare to have two hours difference between the first sector and the second sector if you are flying the northern route I really love polar flights because you literally feel the loneliness around the globe over this point you are like 400 guys in one tube metal tube and then I just start thinking you know if something happens the closest alternate closest airport is like two or three hours away from you 
and you don't have any communications tools to com contact with the company and that's why you have to prepare for this flight really nice and you have to check the equipment and everything before the polar region and after the polar region because there's a lot of time that you will question the world because there is no communication tool around you it's really interesting flights i feel privileged because this not each pilot can do this kind of flights first of all your route should be suitable for that for instance if i was in turkish airlines there was no way for me to make a polar flight because the turkey and the us they're clo so close to each other it's not that beneficial to fly over the polar route you don't save anything but from middle east to us you have this option so you should be lucky you should fly for an airline where they use the polar routes therefore I feel extremely lucky to have these two, so I practice at least 10 times in Emirates to fly this Polaros. Okay guys, that's enough for the Polar flights. When we land in Seattle, the, I love Seattle because the hotel is right in the middle of city center. I also love Seattle city a lot because there is a lot to do. It's very mountainous area, there's a sea, there are lots of attractions, tracking you could do. And if you don't want to do anything, you can just walk in downtown, you can go to all the Starbucks in the world history and then you can have nice food, drinks and also you can go for shopping in the Seattle without renting a car. That's why guys, people always want to go to Seattle, it's very well known destination in Emirates and most of the crew wants to go there. It's extremely rare that you can swap this kind of flights with Seattle. Let's say if you have Houston and if you want to swap it with the Seattle, no one will accept it because Seattle is very well f known and famous flight that everyone wants to go. After that guys, I had five days off and I was ready for the last flight of the month is Chennai turnaround. Originally, I had Chennai layover, but I had things to do. Therefore, I asked my friend, very close friend of mine, Matt, to swap the flight and thanks to him, he accepted. So he went to layover and I made Chennai turnaround because if you do this flight during daytime, it's, you can make a turnaround. But if you make it this flight at night, you cannot make a turnaround flight because of the flight time and due to limitations. And the flight is not short, it's very long turnaround. First sector was four hour, five minutes. The return sector was four hour, nine minutes. I love long turnarounds because they are very productive. In one day, you fly eight, nine hours almost, and then you are done. Therefore, if you make like, let's say, seven, eight of them, you are done theoretically and you could have 20 days, 22 days off in a month easily. Of course, life is not that ideal. Therefore, you don't fly often this kind of flights. But still, I like Addis Ababa, Istanbul, Beirut, Chennai turnarounds. Those are all like eight, seven, eight, nine hours long in total two ways all right in october i flew 76 hours 10 minutes plus six hour simulators during this time frame i had 12 days off two rest days and also i had one standby which is not used so theoretically i was at home in this day as well i flew to orlando Damman, chennai seattle and muscat and also i had two simulators day and one SAP recurrent training. All right, guys, that concludes Pilot Talk October 2022. But before going, as usual, please do not forget to like my videos, subscribe my channel, and hit the bell button to get the notifications once I upload the new videos. All right, guys, that being said, see you in another Pilot Talk, which is gonna be November 2022. Bye-bye.